Welcome to Lever Up Your Life. I'm Nate Barger. I went from prison time and bankruptcy to now owning over $200 million in real estate. I want to show you guys all the mistakes I made so you don't make the same mistakes. It's time you create massive wealth for yourself. I am here with an amazing guest today, Brandon from Investment Joy. I want to thank you so much for coming out and looking at these hotels with us, brother. It's been amazing. I, yeah, I, my, I love numbers. I love talking numbers. This is, um, my wife would say that numbers are my love language when it comes to money. And it's just my mind's been constantly blown this whole trip so far. We've, we're only like half done with the day. Half done? Yeah, We've already made done. a million dollars. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, I, with the, if these numbers are right, it sounds like more like tens of millions of dollars. So it's just, it's been an absolutely wonderful trip looking at both these hotels. The deal that you're, you've already got done, you're renovating, you're making money, you're gaining equity, you're cash flowing on it. And then we looked at this other one today. Um, that's a potential uh, deal for me to get into, possibly. Two of them, brother. Awesome. Two of them. Two of, oh, over two of, 500. Them. Imagine that. Over, over, he jumps in a hotel. It's his first deal. He does over 500 rooms. That'd be incredible. No money out of pocket. We can syndicate yeah. it all because yeah. we know that you guys yes. want to invest in, in, in real estate, yes. commercial real estate. Yep. Yeah. And the, the, the numbers on these, they, it, it would be like buying one of my cash-flowing, decent – Little rentals in Southern Ohio that I can put $25,000 into it, make good money on it, cash out, refinance, get money levered, but with four, t four more zeros on it. Yeah. It's just that at an infinitely b bigger scale. It's and that's why me amazing. and Mike, that's why Mike came to me and he said, Nate, look, man. Yeah. He said, I see all these people checking out, dying. Yeah. And their kids don't want nothing to do with these properties. Oh, yeah. He said, we got to get some better stuff. Yeah. And so you've done really well, and you know how to continue to do well, right? I'd like but, to think so. But look, man, the name of the podcast is Lever Up. And you've been levering up everything in oh your life. Oh, my goodness, yes. You've levered up your kids. You've levered up your wife. you levered up your family. Stop. Your community you've levered up. You even levered own up. the newspaper yeah. to your community, man. That's amazing, man. I'm trying to. Yeah, yeah. Trying, trying to get it all No done. fake news in Chillicothe. Is it yeah. Chillicothe? Well, it's uh, the Scioto Post, and we operate pretty much in the Scioto Valley region of southern Ohio. So it's starting in Pickaway County and going all, all the way down to the river. Man, that is amazing, so, yeah, brother. That's pretty cool. We got huge distribution. We actually we compete very well online with the Columbus Dispatch. Really? So there's there's days that we days and weeks that we absolutely blow them out of the water. Wow. When it comes to distribution. We've had several weekends where we beat uh, we beat the Columbus Dispatch, and we beat the local Fox News affiliate. Really? When it comes to online news, so it's pretty cool. I make no money on it, but I got lots of influence. And it's like if I was to buy a business here in Columbus, like a hotel, I, I can put free ads online through my newspaper. And I do that for my car washes. I do that for my laundromat. And it's just I paid $6,000 to purchase the newspaper back in 2017. Um, that was my money out of pocket. I've put nothing in it since, and it's just a situation of – it's a media asset for me to use in my community to get free ads when I need them. So that's, that's awesome, pretty, that's man. Cool. Not only that, but you're doing a ton of stuff in your community. Not just that. You're all over YouTube. You're over TikTok. You're about yep. to hit a billion. You got a billion yeah, views already? We already hit already? a billion. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. A billion views, man. Yeah, it's mind-blowing. I never would have thought. I could not have imagined when I started doing this. Small seriously. Ohio town boy. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So, but, but, so you're crushing it. You own car washes. Mm -hmm. You own... Uh, laundry mats. You own a ton of properties. You even own a railroad station and a newspaper. Yes. Yeah. So you must have started off. Your family must have been really wealthy. You inherited a lot of money. No, absolutely not. So my claim to fame is I've been evicted twice. I did mention someone said, "Oh, your parents must." <laughs> wait, have been wait, rich. wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Is that how you learn the eviction laws? No. No. Um, <laughs> no. No. My parents really don't like landlords. Like they, growing up, they just absolutely did not like my landlord growing up. Um, so we got a 30 day notice when I was six years old, 1991. Um, the landlord tried to get my parents to buy the house. They just didn't have the capability of doing it or under, I guess it's less capability. It's more about, they just didn't understand the process. How do you buy a house? They, mm -hmm. they couldn't do it. Uh, my dad was in, uh, Vietnam. He was in the military. He could have used a VA loan to get a property with little to no money down, but, um, he just could not figure out how to do that. Um, so we got a 30 day, 30 day notice because my landlord f wanted to sell it. My parents couldn't afford it. Uh, so we moved to a little farmhouse. We stayed there from uh, 91 till 04 when we got evicted again. Um, that's a really weird story. We, uh, it was a little tenant house in the middle of a cornfield. Um, the, the landlord decided to place an oil well. We've got lots of fracking, lots of natural wow. gas in Southern Ohio. 
So the landlord wanted to have a oil well in, on the farm. That uh, line on the oil well got a leak. It flooded our house with natural gas and crude oil. Wow. Um, my, he was scared to death of my parents suing him, so he evicted us. Really? So I went to go live with my grandma. This is 03, 04. Um, right around the same time I would have met uh, Matthew up front playing paintball. Um, but uh, got evicted. Had to shut down my paintball company around that time. I moved in with my grandma, my mom, dad, and brother. Had to move into this little coffee shop in Circleville. Um, right, That's around the same time my dad had his heart attack. Wow, I man. went and got a job at a warehouse. Uh, worked at a warehouse for three years. Decided to... Um, I realized that warehousing was not going to pay for family. Mm -hmm. Always aspired to have a family, get married. That whole, the, the normal thing, I guess, as some would say, you know, the average thing. I was like, I should get in real estate because everybody's rich. Um, I'll never be able to go to college. That just will never happen to me. So real estate's going to be how I can make some money without going to Absolutely, college. Absolutely, brother. So I got real estate uh, as a sales agent, as an agent working with ERA Martin out uh, of uh, Southern Ohio, uh, one of the bigger brokers, and realized pretty quick that it wasn't the agents that had money. It was the investors. Yes. I started meeting people just like my parents. I met a janitor and I, uh, a janitor named Bill mm -hmm. for Nationwide Children's Hospital here in Columbus. And I met a truck driver named Joe down in Circleville who drove trucks for GM and Delphi here in Columbus. Same people my dad drove truck for. Uh, but wow. Both those guys were independently wealthy because they invested in real estate. They, uh, Joe invested in stocks. Wow. Also uh, kind of got under the mentorship of a former oil CEO. He was the CEO of an oil company in Southern Ohio for 30 some years, retired because he didn't like real estate agents, said I can do better than any of them can because <laughs> real estate agents are stupid. Um, that's what I mean. That, he didn't, Norm did not say that, but that's kind of. Yeah, kinda it was the his gist demeanor, of, huh? It was his demeanor. Any, yep. Anybody can be a real estate agent. And so between these people, I started running into people that were investing. And it's just in between a janitor at a hospital who flipped houses in his spare time and a truck driver who flipped houses in his spare time. I thought, this is how you make money. And they told me, like, these agents aren't making money. If an agent makes real money, they've invested in real estate. Yep. They did not, they did not be, they were not a sales agent. That's right. That's the right. day you cannot make a sale is the day you go hungry. So I thought, that's okay, right. That's I've right. got to get into this. So I helped my brother buy an apartment complex in 2007. Um, it went well, but then the, the subprime crisis hit. Mm -hmm. And it just essentially knocked me out of the game for five years because I was like, I just I can't figure out how to get a mortgage with no wow. money down. Because wow. I, I got a uh, stated income loan for yep. that apartment complex. And I was like, I don't know how to do this deal anymore. They call anymore. those ninja loans. Yeah. No, no, no income, no job, no assets. I got a piece of paper from the uh, mortgage company in 07 for the loan with my brother because we were partnering on a deal. And they sent me a piece of paper, had my job, had my income, just sign it. I, you know, I signed the piece of paper, <laughs> mailed off, like, what did I just sign? And it was just, but we've still got that. I think we just paid off that loan this year. 6.35% um, interest, 100% financing. I think I paid $500 in loan, loan prep fees. Wow. Um, so it was just a crazy deal. Who, who was that, like Washington Mutual or uh, Countrywide? Am or I Indy allowed Mac? to say it was PHH Mortgage? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was PHH Mortgage. They're not in the business anymore under PHH mortgage, but they've, they they still have assets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so well, those they, assets sold and got bundled and yeah, sold off the yeah. securities. So all, these, and, all these multiple times. So it took me from 2007, 2008 doing those deals till 2013. It's like I was still in real estate, but I got into more into digital marketing, building websites. You ever read these, see these ads online? You, you know, you could build these little websites that make $100 a month or whatever. Mm -hmm. I started building, I built 150 of those. Wow. And they were making me, you know, $70,000 a year just with 250 websites. I was like, I want to get into real estate because this website stuff sucks. Yeah, that's build, a lot of websites to yeah, manage. You build a website, it lasts three years, it dies, you build another one and you just churn through those many websites making money. That's that. That's that. how that deal works. So I packaged them up, I sold them for $50,000. Um, just so I could like get into real estate. I was like, I'm gonna start an investment fund. I think that, you know, I've been seeing these deals since 2009, single family detached houses right outside Columbus, Ohio. I'm in Pickaway County. So one county south of Franklin. I'm seeing three bed, one bath. They rent for 800 bucks a month, all day, every day. I can get them for $15,000. Any, wow. any, any investor in the right mind would buy those. I just need to insert myself into their business cycle and be the guy that buys them. So I took 25,000 to 50, 50, 25 K to live on for my family for a year is what I figured out. We could live for a year on 25 K. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Can I just say something? Yeah. 
Guys, that right there, do you see what he's doing? He's failing, but he's not stopping. A lot of you guys will fail one time and give up, yep. or you're afraid to go out and fail. The difference is Brandon is not afraid to yep. fail because he knows ultimately, and you know what? He's not afraid to take a chance on himself. Yep. I did something similar with you guys over here later, but he took a chance. He said, look, I'm going to live off 25 grand. That's $2,000 a month, and I'm going to take this other 25 grand, and I'm going to do something. And your wife, what did she think at the time? She's fine with it. She, she's See, support your spouse when they got a dream. Because without her, you couldn't have done it. No, because she, my wife's very thrifty. She's very budget-oriented. She, she, she's very affordable. She doesn't go out and spend money like crazy. She did not when we first got married. She still does it to this today. This today. If she spends over $100 on Amazon, she asks me, can we afford this? Yeah. She asked me the other day, can we afford these little plastic bins for the kids to put their Legos in because they're trying to color code my Legos. And, and Brandon's Legos. over here, and that's like when Eminem asked if he could afford a Rolex. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, a hundred of them. Yeah. So so my wife's just amazing at um, budgeting and things. So she knew that this stuff was going on. She said, you know what? If we have to live in a cardboard box, we have to move in with a parent. My Bro, parent, that my, is my parents amazing. Were, my parents are still alive in 2013, both of them. And her, um, her mom had just got married. You know, if we have to move in with family, I guess we can do that. I don't want to do that. You'll probably figure out some way so we don't lose the house, but whatever. So I sold, my, amazing, web I sold my websites off uh, 25K, and I was like, I started packaging these deals. I had a, a hit list of properties, and one was this. I still have it today. It's on, on uh, Mill Street in Circleville. And it was $23,000. It was a uh, HUD foreclosure mm -hmm. full of mold. And I was like, I can make money on this because that's a five bed, two bath corner lot, one car garage. I'm like, I will make money on this. Let's go out and buy it. I, I uh, had 25K of my own money to throw in the deal, which was enough to purchase the property, but not enough to renovate it. But I knew that I could get investors. I knew I could get investors. And it was just like the floodgates opened. They're like, you could actually buy a house that's going to rent for $800 a month in Circleville, Ohio. And you can, we can loan you money and you're going to you're going to give some equity in the deal you're going to give us a return on it. i'm like yeah uh, of course like yeah. okay i you know 10 percent interest on twenty five thousand dollars is 20, 200 bucks a month yeah 200 bucks a month 200 yeah. 210 dollars a month yeah. yeah i can pay you 210 a month yeah on this house that i want to rent for eight ten eight hundred dollars a month and um my carrying costs are another 150 dollars a month between taxes and insurance hundred dollars for maintenance i'm like yeah, I and I'm yeah, going to put 300 no bucks a month in my pocket every month. Mm -hmm. They were like, it wasn't, I'm like, can I get $25, 25K for the deal? They're like, no, we're going to give you 100. Go get more of these things. Wow. And so I went down the street and bought another one for another. Uh, now, now, where did you meet your investors? Online on uh, Bitcoin forums. Because I ran into people that just got recently got super ultra rich on yep, Bitcoin. Yep, yep. And it, that was when Bitcoin first went to $100 uh, coin. I was like, you should diversify your money and get some money. With when it went to a hundred a coin, a hundred a Bitcoin. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So he really paid $50 million for that house. Yeah. No, yeah. no. Cause I had been, I've been in Bitcoin since it came out mm -hmm. and I knew the market well enough. I'm like, yeah, it could go to a hundred thousand dollars of Bitcoin or it could collapse down to a dollar Bitcoin again. Cause we've seen that a couple times. So I was like, let's go put some money in, um, in some properties. And it was just like instantaneously within six months, I had a hundred, you know, hundred, 125 K. Wow. I was like, wow, okay, we've got enough money to do this house, another house, and I can buy an apartment complex. So then we bought the apartment complex, and we had, I had used the $100,000, and this is why I have my relationship with private money as opposed to banks. Mm -hmm. It was like, ah, I, I took that deal to a bank, and they just didn't like it. They're yes. like, we don't, we don't like this Bitcoin stuff. You know, you went and got private money with Bitcoin. We don't like that. Yep. Uh, we're not going to give you money. So, Well, you know why? Bitcoin is the bank's competitor. Yeah. But, I mean, we're talking 2014 at that point, too. Yeah, they didn't even know. They didn't understand it. So I went to the banks. They didn't have any interest. I went back to the Bitcoin guys, and they said, how much you need? And I said, eh, how about $300,000? Boom. Three months later, another $300,000 in private money. Went, Holy crap. Wow. So by that time, we had 18 rentals, um, and I did this forum post just about my upbringing. Hey, I've been evicted twice. Hey, I've, I've struggled with this. Hey, my dad had a heart attack. Hey, I worked, you know, just... My brother had to, to support the family. I worked at the warehouse. My brother went to go and pick trash up for the city, the city of Circleville. Like, this is just our life. I've got 18 rentals now, and I have mm -hmm. 25K out of pocket. And wow. I posted on um, Bigger Pockets. I did the, this forum post. I'm sure it's still up. And 
it was just all these private investors came out of the woodwork and said, we want to get these deals, Brandon. We want to partner with you on these deals. And I started telling them, I said, I'm going to go, here's a bank account with five bucks in it. You're serious about giving me some money. Why are some funds? <laughs> I'm not sure that this is kosher to do, but a week later, I have $80,000 in that account from one guy in Texas. He's wow. like, let's do some deals, buddy. I'm like, wow. okay. I'm like, so we go and I buy two properties. I buy du du two duplexes. So, so they just trusted you? Just They just trusted me and they wired funds just on my name in this forum post. Don't do that if you're in Nigeria. Yeah, no, don't do saying. that. I'm not, I would not recommend anybody do this. That's, no, that's great, man. That's don't a, do it. They, true entrepreneur yeah, right there. They, I failed, I failed, I yeah, failed. Yeah. But guess what? That is not my final destination. Yeah. yeah. So this guy from Texas, he gets on an airplane after we buy the house. He said, I want to see what I bought. Okay. We go around, we look, and he says, and we look, and he's like, Brandon, I got a million dollars cash. Just start giving me deals. So we start buying more properties. I take him up to probably 550. And then it's like, you know, I'm paying this guy 8% on a 20 year note. Um, he gets some equity. He gets 50% of the upside if we sell these properties. You know, I want to do a better deal. So I start, I start going and doing forum posting, just talking to people. This is 2017 ish. I just talk a little bit about these deals that I'm doing. Boom. How much money do you need? How much, what's your interest rate? Mm -hmm. um, I was like, can we do, you know, I want to do 8%, but I want to be interest only. No, yeah. 20, no, yeah, yeah. no 20 year note. Yep. I don't want to give you 50% of the upside. I want to give you 35%. Um, get as much, you know, ha another half million dollars that way. Um, at, around that time, my uh, <laughs> landlord who evicted me when I was six, he calls me up and says, you are, you're on fire, Brandon. You're doing all these deals. Next time you need money, give me a call. I want wow. to do some deals with you. Wow. So I've got like another quarter of a million, maybe $300,000 from the landlord that evicted me. <laughs> and, and I'm only paying him like 7% interest. You're like, I'm going to take, take him down to 7%. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, I'm not paying him much. Yeah. And it's like. Now, now 7% I interest only? Interest only, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, um, and, and that was in 18, 2018. Yeah, 2018 ish. Mm -hmm. So I've got all this private money. You know, it is over bank rates. You know, I've, I've got I got one guy at nine. It's easy. It's easy. Just make I, a phone call. Hey, man, send make, me some money. Yeah, that's how all my money works right now. I make a phone call. I say, hey, I want, you know, five hundred thousand uh, dollars. My guy with the trailer park. I want a hundred thousand. I want one million dollars for the trailer park. And he says, all right, just let me know. Um, I'll give you a million dollars. We'll put it in a bank account. Whatever. We go look, we drive around. I rent a car for two days. He drives around, we look at a trailer park. He's like, yeah, I've got a million dollars. Let's let's go do a trailer park. So um, we're doing these deals and now we're at the point I'm trying to cash out, refinance them. I want to liquidate two or three of my investors. I'll buy out all my landlord that evicted me. Um, we got the, Bit, got the Bitcoin guys, they're all getting cashed out this year, but I've got cash on hand to pay them off. Um, so we're like cashing out all these investors because I want more control over the assets. Yeah. And it'll boost my bottom line because with these cash out refinances, we're going to settle the debt. We're going to settle the investors. But because we're going from 8% ish on a 20 year note, or actually it's like a 15 year note on most of these positions at this wow. point. Wow. And we're going to go down to like a 5%. At 30. Uh, yeah. On 30, um, yeah, I got one it. bank that'll do it. It's like, my cash flow is going to go up per month. I'm going to pay myself more. We're going to settle all the investors off. But now, I, I, you know, I've been talking to you about buying my time back. I met another investor. He's got 500, and he's looking at the hundred million dollar invest and investment. He's like, I got 10, 10 to 25 million dollars cash to spend. He was at my office last Friday. Mm -hmm. um, he drove all the way from Cincinnati to. He's another Cincinnati guy. Drove all the way from Cincinnati to Circleville to meet with me to say I want to take the ne next step cash out refinance or I want to uh, 1031 exchange all these help me find a 50 to 100 million dollar deal brand I'm tired of driving around in my apartment complexes so it's like now I'm in that point and I'm doing social media on the side and the social media is just blown up I got over 5 million subscribers uh, we reached 1 billion billion video views and probably awesome, one of the brother. top finance guys in short format content that you, you are man your, your stuff is amazing to watch it's addicting <laughs> and I just sit there and look at look at all day just Watch yeah. what you're doing, man. Yeah. So it's just one of those things. It's just I find myself in this this crazy point. But what I'm trying to do is document every segment of it because my ultimate goal was to show people this is how you take $5 to your name and this is how you could scale it to a $50 million ass assets, $100 million, uh, 250. I've got a guy that's a billionaire over in, in Nevada right now. And we're working on doing some video content and some training because it, it's, I meet more people that were in jail 
with poor, poor drug addicted parents. Mm -hmm. um, I got a guy that has a, a mini hotel, 123 units down Chillicothe. Um, his mom was a heroin addict. I meet more people like that on a daily basis than I do the person that was a trust fund baby. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying the trust fund babies don't exist. I know one great guy, wonderful human being from Southern Ohio. He's a trust fund guy. And it's like the major, everybody is a hustler. Everybody mm -hmm. works their butt off and they're doing deals over and over and over again. They're, mm -hmm. they're just, their, their work ethic's impeccable. But it doesn't really matter about who your parents were. That's right. It doesn't matter whether you went to prison. That's right. It doesn't matter, you know, where you are at life at this point. It matters. Are you willing to work? Are you willing to hustle? Are you willing to educate yourself? If so, generally speaking, here's the pathway that you have to do it. You have to start edu You have to start spend more time educating yourself than in, in entertainment. That's I right. don't know. I don't know any rich Netflix junkies. Mm -hmm. I don't know any wealthy people that are going out there. That's that early on, we're buying the nice vehicles. We're in a nice luck, luxury van right now. But I don't run into anybody, very few people, that closed on their first house and then they went out and they rented it. They, Brandon, they, when, I, when I went bankrupt, I went to my buddy and I had $2,300. He has a car lot. Mm -hmm. And I bought a 1997 Toyota Camry, guys. <laughs> and it had 134,000 miles. I was like, man, this yeah. thing will last a while. Yeah. And I drove it through bankruptcy for a couple years and the day that i promise you i bought my first big building come out of bankruptcy a 97 unit the engine blew up oh my goodness and i said man ain't this fitting yeah ain't that fitting and i went and bought me another toyota camry hybrid because go. i was grinding at the time yeah. man i was yeah. grinding so you, you know to your point exactly man it's they see all the stuff the nice stuff but they don't see all the grind and effort that <laughs> no. you had to go through that i had to go through yeah. and guys when he's telling you you can do it and he's talking about trust fund babies. 88% of millionaires are self-made. Yes. According to Fidelity. Yeah. And 90% of those millionaires yeah. made their money through real estate. So yeah. uh, guys, this is where it's at. Yeah. So I don't meet those. I don't meet the rich trust fund babies. I meet the people that have hustled hard. They worked hard. And, and to me, it's not about luck. It's about, did you fail enough? Did you learn enough in the process of failing to get to the point that you have the the business assets, the the business mindset to go and do it. I, I, right. I the way I describe it, and I'm, one of these days I'll spend a bunch of money on making the, a video for it. Do you have this this tool chest? Do you have this war fund? Do you have this idea box? Do you have this gigantic toolbox of different business ideas and concepts that when you approach a hotel or you approach that dumpy house with the the roof falling out, do you have enough tools in your tool chest to get that deal working? like it should. It's all about what value do you bring to the table? Mm -hmm. um, I, I did a seminar. It's the one that Matt was at. Um, when you have uh, money, you only have one tool in your tool chest. Isn't it, is having money in the bank account a, 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 an important tool? Yeah, it's a good important tool. But is it the only tool that you need to be successful? No, it's not. Because you need to have knowledge of how to use that money. You That's need right. to have the knowledge of how to structure a deal, how to make it work. And then if you don't have the, the, the uh, wherewithal to spend your time and invest your time, we're, we're on a roof today. Mm -hmm. You've been on that roof to inspect it. You've been working through those hotels. You, were, you stuck your head in a, um, <laughs> was that a shower drain or was that a toilet drain? Yep, that was, that above was a, your, that was a shower, shower drain. drain above mm -hmm. your head. He's sticking his head in, in a, a clean out hole to see how to, to fix a problem that they haven't probably been able to resolve for 10 years. Yep. You're spending your knowledge and you're spending your time, your hustle to do it. You would have to spend a lot of money to fix that problem. So if you don't, you have time and you have money, you're going to have to buy somebody else's knowledge or you're gonna to have to buy somebody else's time. If That's all you right. have is money, you're gonna to have to buy somebody else's knowledge, you're gonna to have to buy somebody else's time. And if you have just have money, you, you're not gonna know whether you're gonna get ripped off. So yeah, yeah, money money is just a tool, but without yeah. without the knowledge, money is just money. It's just money. It all you can do is be a consumer. Yeah. And when you get you have money, everybody's gonna be with their hand out. Mm -hmm. We started I started doing coaching and training uh, uh, about six weeks, maybe seven weeks ago just like private coaching, private training. And I run into all the, I'm running into quite a few people now that have large inheritances. And they've said, I don't know what to do with them. And mm -hmm. I'm like, the biggest problem is there's going to be all the money in the world 
is they're, they're going to be here with their hand out. I've got a good, I would consider him a good friend. He's a trust fund baby. And he, then he sca gets scammed every year to two years. Some big financial scam comes his way. He asks my advice. I tell him, please don't do this. You're getting scammed. Right now, he's being scammed with binary options. I don't know if you know anything about binary yep, options. Yeah, a little bit. Um, so it's like you're buying you're, you're buying lottery tickets with the stock market. It's high high stakes gambling, man. Extremely high stakes gambling. And he gave me a, a, access to his account for just some oversight. And I said, I appreciate you giving me access to your, your trading account. But I said, you're getting scammed. You don't trust me. You don't believe anything I say. And uh, he mortgaged a property. Whoa. He mortgaged a house, his a condo his dad gave him. That's bad. Uh, he put a uh, first more. It was uh, uh, cash, owned for cash, cash free uh, condo his dad gave him. And uh, he's mortgaged it to do binary options. I looked last night before this podcast, he's down 80%. 80% mm. of the money from that cash out refinance is gone. Mm. And it's because Dave, who's a nice guy, we're doing videos about him on my YouTube channel. He has money and he has time, but he has no knowledge at all inve of investments. And he's just constantly getting scammed since I've Which known is him. why the hotels, why we wanted to do that? Because, yeah. you know, we pass away, we got, you know, several billion, let's say, worth of hotels. Mm. Yeah. Those hotels will continue to operate. Yeah. And our kids won't have to operate them. Mm. The money will just go into the trust. You create a dynasty trust. Yeah. The dynasty trust lives on forever. You don't pay any taxes sure. except on the distributions. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, creating generational wealth. Yeah. And so um, for my kids, they're all going to be well taken care of. But with the way that I'm planning our trusts is they will never starve. Mm -hmm. And they'll have a place to live. But beyond that, it's up to them. Yes. Ultimately, I want my kids to be charitable. We're very religious, um, you know, running in the same circle as Matt up there. And it's just like, I want my kids to change the world, however that is. Mm -hmm. If my kids want to go get on airplane and go to Africa and help starving kids in Africa, I want them to have the assets and the money to be able to do that. That's right. That's if right. they want to, my son loves hotels. You know, he wants to run a hotel. He said, I want to run a hotel someday. I was like, okay, we might be able to do that pretty quick one. So um, my kids want to, you know, my daughter loves animals. And I want them to be able to change the world and be an asset to, to everybody around them in whatever way they make makes sense. But they've got to learn the hustle. They've yes. got to learn the skill set. They've got to do the things that they have to do in order to achieve those things because I'm not going to hand everything to them in life on a silver platter. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. I had this question, uh, same. Sure. Have you always felt that way? Uh, about uh, with regards to raising and upbringing children? No, like or, giving them money. Because when yes, I, yeah. you have, okay, okay. Yeah. I just don't see the point in giving them money because like, and this is what I dealt with early on as a real estate agent. I, I can't say that I've always felt this way, but I started feeling this way very early on in my real estate career because I would run into people that had been given a large portfolio of real estate. Mm -hmm. They absolutely ran into Squandered my ground. It. Yep. And some of my best deals that I've done were second generation wealth. They squandered it and they have to fire sell it. Yeah, um, and, and, and they don't know how to get out and hustle because no, they were handed it. No, they were handed it and they never spent enough time in their parents' business struggling. Or they hated it because it was or, the thing, they didn't understand a parent and maybe the parent didn't learn to balance it. Yes. And all they did was yeah. work. And they said, I don't want anything to do yeah. with that. Yeah. And that's the problem. And I have this conversation because I was the president of an investment association for a few years. I've had the opportunity to talk to investors. What's your, what's your, your, what is the plan with your children? And I would say the vast majority of them, they're going to auction all my assets off. These investors that have spent, you know, wow. they're all in their 60, 70 years old. They've spent the past 30 years of their life building generational wealth. What's your current kid's current plan? I don't know. That's number one. I don't mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. Number two, they can sell it. Very few people are well, actually. Well, you sell it, you're paying inheritance tax. Uh, yeah, they're. Are, are you are, are you familiar with the IBC infinite banking infinite bank concept? concepts? Yeah. 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 I'm pretty well. I'm I'm pretty well um, knowledgeable about that. I have some strong feelings about IBC. Um, they're most, they're, I'm not super positive on it. And maybe it's because I run into guys that Can do. Can you tell me why? Um, I've talked to a couple IBC guys and they're charging five to 6% management fees on okay. managing the trust. So I'll, I'm going to hook you up with somebody. Okay. 
And you're not paying them type of fees. Yeah. You're, 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 you're paying a lot less than that. But yeah, I, I've run into a couple people that are doing IBC and they're much lower. But then I know a lot of guys that are building um, huge and huge trusts. Um, they're not there. I'd have to really sit down and think about what they are. They're not um, charitable remainder trusts, but there's some sort of trust. But then they're a hybrid between that and Roth IRAs. Mm -hmm. So when they die, the Roth IRA money gets thrown into the trust and their kids are able to manage the trust. There's also something called a Skyhook Trust. Mm -hmm. So when the, um, the, the person dies, everything in their, their portfolio gets a stepped up basis. And then the kids inherit it at the significantly stepped up basis. So it sits inside that container. <coughs> and then when the second generation dies, it gets the stepped up basis. So when it comes time to sell, you're able I'll show to you how to do it okay. where you never have to pay taxes on okay. it. It stays in a trust. There's no inheritance tax. Are you doing that specifically inside an infinite banking system? You use infinite banking, banking. is to sit. The infinite banking system sits inside your trust. It's sits just inside a vehicle. the trust. Okay. But it also has a, a whole life uh, value yep. policy, and it's institutional. And so on the institutional side, you can borrow 100%, 95% of your money you put in. Okay. So if you put half a million in, and this pays about a five. 5.25% dividend, Okay, you can borrow the money back at about 125 basis points below prime, yeah. which is, you know, four and a half percent right now. Okay. So you're making leverage on your own money. Yeah. And what biggest thing is, brother, you're able to take that money and loan it back to yourself and pay interest on it and take that interest yeah. as a write-off. So you're able to put that money back, it, back it's into just, the ABC. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like maybe one of my biggest digs or problems with IBC has been the, the, the management cost was very, very high. Um, right now in my non real estate portfolio, I'm doing about 10%, 11% a year. Um, we, we've backdated my strategy to about 1935. And I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty confident I can do 10% a year on my fixed investments, my stock market-ish investments. So within, I know from my understanding within IBC, it has to, it can only go into certain investment vehicles. They're pretty strict, as long if you are not loaning the money off the IBC. You can borrow the money and put it in whatever you want. Okay. It's a way of taking your money, you put it over in this whole life policy. The mm -hmm. whole life policy has a value. You can borrow then the whole life uh, policy maybe have ten million dollars in, in value, right? Yeah. You take the money you put in there, you can borrow 95% of that back cheaper than the dividend you're getting, right? Yes. Then the money that you borrowed back, you pay interest on, you can write that off. Yeah. You're paying interest to yourself. Self, yeah. So the, the, I guess my thing is the dividend's about a 5.25% return. Historically, it's been always higher than that since okay. the 1860s. If you okay. go with the company that I'm dealing with, there okay. are only two companies that are rated AAA. Yeah. This is one of them. Yeah. Microsoft's the other. Okay. Yeah, I, I would have to take a look at it and see what company that is. It's just that right- It's Northwest Mutual. Northwest Mutual, okay. They've been around since 1860. Yeah, that's probably the one that I've run into. And they're, they, um, you go through a broker, I assume, to get that policy, that writes that policy? You go, no, I go through Northwest yourself. They're direct, okay. Yeah, and I got the, one of the head guys that you can talk to, and okay. he is phenomenal. Okay. And, you know, it's all about, um, you know, really, once you get over, I think it's 25 million in assets right now, uh -huh. not assets, but 25 million net worth, man, mm -hmm. you got to, your kids get that. They're going to pay 40% of it. Yeah. So if they have to fire, they have to fire, sell it, just pay the taxes. Yes. So you put it in these dynasty yeah. trusts, you line it up. Them yeah. can be in Alaska, South Dakota. Sure. There's a ton of states that allow that. Okay. And so uh, we'll get into that later though, but man, I'd sure. love to share that with you. Brother. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Love to talk about it. But yeah. It's all stuff that I've looked but at. But again, that's all knowledge. Yeah. Right. What 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 are wealthy people doing, guys? They are figuring out ways to become wealthier and work less. Is that right? Yes. Why? Because you know that plane trip your kid takes to Africa costs a lot of money. Yeah. So it's to support their hopes and dreams. But there's one common thing about most wealthy people that you guys might not know. They just want to get this money so they can get back. It's not so they can go yeah. and live this lavish life. I mean, that's okay, but at first, and then maybe that's your goal, but then you're like, man, that's not fulfilling. No. What's fulfilling is seeing you guys change your life. Yeah. And that's why he shares all the knowledge he shares. 
I mean, you got some of the greatest. And and the videos are so simple. The way you put them together, it's like, huh? Yeah. No, it's like, oh, wow, I can do that. Yeah. I can buy a vending machine. I can come up with that much money. Yeah. And then how do you scale up from that? Yeah. So how did you, you, you talked about being a realtor and you knew, and then you became a realtor. Yes. But you saw that that wasn't really the yeah. way. Yeah, the, we had an agent specifically. Um, you know, I started really wanting to get into investments in 07, 08. You said and when they pulled up, what was it, in the Cadillac? Uh, uh, you seen yeah, the poker? I, yeah, I said um, that you know, I, I, in, in Circleville, in my small town, all the agents drove Cadillacs and they, they wore suits. I was like, oh, man, that's <laughs> life for me. And I don't know, they, none of them had Rolexes, but they had nicer watches. You know, $500,000 watches. I was like, that's the life for me. And then I got in and started talking to them about their Cadillacs and their nice suits, and then I found out that they were working 60, 70 hours a week. The Cadillac was underwater they had loaned every penny on it mm -hmm. and i'm like oh my gosh this is just a facade this is just this is all this fake lifestyle stuff yep, yep. and it's just you're not really you're not really doing well mm -hmm. but then i started talking to norm my mentor who's the ceo he's like yeah they're all broke like they just you know we it, it, i didn't know the term lifestyle creep that's what it is. You just get nicer stuff to impress friends that you don't really care about. Yep, yep. Or I guess not right. friends you care about. You care. You buy, you you buy stuff to impress people you don't care about. That's right. Yeah. So like, I was like, holy crap! But then I ran into these guys who were driving beat up F one fifties. They looked like people that I knew. They looked like the average person. And you know, uh, Joe, the truck driver. I said, you need to get a mortgage to flip these houses. No, I don't. He threw a checkbook at me. He said, open it up. I'm like, I open it up. There's three hundred fifty-two thousand dollars cash in one account. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. you're a truck driver. How is this even, <laughs> this doesn't even make sense. How You cannot you have... work your way to retirement. Yeah, you and, can't. Uh, and he was probably mid fifties and he had retired a few years ago. And I'm like, my dad, my dad drove, retired from trucking essentially because he had a heart attack yeah, because yeah, yeah. he could not physically do it anymore. And here you are mid fifties. You, yeah, you drove truck for 20, 30 years, but you retired and all this money you have is not from driving the truck. It's from investing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I, I, this is what I have to do. I can't be like the agent that's 60 years old down the hallway who's f cussing at the, t the TV or radio on their desk because they're not getting their 3% Social Security increase this year. Oh, wow. Cussing out the president who was it would have been... Whoever the president was at that time. Jimmy Carter. Yeah, no. no, it wasn't Jimmy Carter. Um, <laughs> that have been a Bush, Bush or Obama. Bush or Obama deal. Yeah. Just cussing that guy out because he wasn't increasing the 3% th three percent three percent or 2%. Two, two percent. What, 2000 a month? Yeah. Well, 24000 yeah, what is yeah, it? You yeah, know, because, and they had worked 30 years in real estate. And I could throw their name out because they're still alive. Nice people. And, you know, you go in their office and there they are on the, 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 the penthouse suite at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas overlooking the Strip. And I see the $50 million sales award on their, their wall. Wow. And they drive, you know, the Cadillac DeVille wow, with wow. the nice V8 North Star engine. And I like that stuff. I'm like, they're very impressive on the surface. They have nothing. Yeah. Paycheck they, to paycheck, yeah. man. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Why are they like this? Well, they never invested money. Mm -hmm. And my uh, mentor, he's like, look at the agent down the hallway. They own five rentals in Logan Elm Village, which is this nice little subdivision in Circleville. Three bed, one bath, built on a slab. They cost $20,000 when they were made. At that time, they were all booking for $100,000. She has five of them uh, shown for cash, no leverage on them whatsoever. Bring her in $4,000 a month. Yep. And he was like, she hates those. And I'm like, why would she hate them? She's bringing $4,000 a month. She makes more money doing that as a landlord. And he's like, she doesn't like it because she doesn't like the appeal of being a landlord. She doesn't oh, like wow. the, the notoriety of having to go wow. out and clean a carpet once in a while. He's like, Brandon, if you want to make money, you need to be an investor or a broker. Those were the two options Norm said. You have to own real estate, own a business, or you have to um, you have to be the broker of the company with all these sales agents under you. Those are the now, two Norm things. is the guy you told me about that does the gas. Yeah, he was, a, he was a, he the CEO of an oil company. The oil company, you know, it's kind of a misnomer. They, they sold gas, but then they also got into subways back in the 80s. Wow. Owned 23 subways. Wow. They owned the gas stations. They started getting into storage locker facilities. They owned a 200-unit uh, location. And uh, they had a uh, – after he, he stopped being the CEO – they had a hostile takeover two or three years after they liquidated their subways, they liquidated the storage lockers, they liquidated the gas stations. And you know, they had 
$200,000 out of pocket for a gas station with a storage locker facility subway sold uh, to, an, to an investor for $2.5 million. Wow. That investor packaged that one up, but got it to a better performing asset, sold it for 5 or $6 million. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I've, you know, it didn't take me any time to see the progression of him selling those assets. Yeah, he, he owned them for decades. This guy owned them for a year or two, pushes the net, five net operating years. income yeah. and makes more yeah. than him. Yeah, so he did a value add specifically on that one. He got the storage lockers to a better performing uh, asset. He put in a beer cave. He boosted. Now, what are storage lockers? What are those? Um, you know, the storage locker facilities, like, uh, I'm telling you, if you poke that camera out of the window here in one minute, we'll pass one. Okay, okay. Yeah. So storage locker facilities. Which side? This side? This side. Okay, yep. okay. I'll tell you when. Um, so storage locker facilities is just to, it stores other people's crap. They're like mini garages. Oh, They're, oh! So just uh, um, storage units. Yeah, storage units. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got yeah. it. Okay. So storage units. So they build a 200 and 200 to 250 door facility um, in southern Ohio. They build it. I think he said for fifteen dollars a square foot. You you build it for fifteen dollars a square foot. You rent it out for four dollars a year. So your your paybacks four or five years. Yeah, yeah. They've got access to, and if they had, and then no, if you leverage it, your payback is. If much. they had to leverage it, it would be nothing. Um, well, you and probably the, could burn it right away. Oh yes. As soon as you get oh, it built yeah, out. Yeah, absolutely, you can burn it. And they're doing eighty percent. Now, can about. you explain it to people? Some of them don't know what burr is. Okay, buy uh, burr is where you buy an asset, you renovate it, or uh, some would call that value add. You you improve the this that you improve the bones and the operating procedure of that business. You rent it out. You get money off of the property. You then um, refinance it. You get money from the bank in order to pay yourself off all the money and investment you put into the, re- the, the renovations of it. And then the last R is you, you repeat it. You do it again. So yep. you buy an asset, you renovate it, you make it better. You um, rent it out. You start making money off that, um, that asset. You um, cash flow it, um, or sorry, you rent, you refinance it through a bank. You pay yourself off. You pay your investors off. You pay back all your money. All right, right now, stick it out the window. That's a storage locker facility. Wow. That one was built for practically nothing. It just sold for $1.25 million. It's on five acres. Um, the negative thing is it's on a floodplain, so the back end of the property can flow, but they can build a two-foot flood wall, and they can fix it. Um, they built that facility for $400,000. Um, they sold it for the 1.2 million. There's 150 lockers at $80 per locker. So that's what? Um, 150, you said? Yeah, 150. So that's 12,000. At 80, that's uh, um, 12,000 a month ish. Yep. 12,000 yeah. a year. So it sold for a 12% gross return on the rents. So the investors going to bump up. Those aren't eighty dollars a month lockers anymore. They're hundred dollar month lockers yep. because of inflation, all that crap. And, so, and and the great thing about real estate is that, you know, that thing you can't build that for fifteen a square foot no not more. Not anymore. So I mean, go- just the concrete alone is fifteen a foot now. Yeah, it is now. So um, it's going to be fifty dollars a square foot to build it out today. Um, you still could do well, which they're what they, the way they're going to really make money off the facility is they're going to build a wall around the property. It's not going to be floodplain anymore. They're going to prevent those problems because the, there's 1,500, 2,000 feet off the property line as a hill. It's the, the wall to the Scioto River um, there on, in Pickway County. So what they're going to do is they're going to build retention there. It's going to cost them half a million dollars to build, but then they're going to access the rest of that ha- that the rest of that five acres and wow, they're going to go they're genius. going to go from a 150 unit storage locker facility to 600 storage wow, 600 unit storage genius. locker facility and, and and there's demand out here for that oh my gosh yes well we got the chip plant um now how we, far is the chip plant from here hour and a half man so it's the chip going to plant is going to so, blow up yes you know is. that is the largest development ever in the united states yes Yes. Largest single development. I didn't know it went to $100 million. Yeah, it went to $100 million. It was going to be a $25 billion. I'm sorry. $20 billion, yeah. Uh, 25 to $30 billion facility. But since they passed this chip this chip bill, um, I don't like the government spending my money. But it will benefit me because Intel is getting like, they're getting a loan guarantee or a tax write-off for 25 to $30 billion to finish up that facility to build the expansion. Mm-hmm. So... It's going to be, um, they're getting like 30 billion of that tax benefit from the, the bill. And they're going to build 
four more phases, $20 billion a clip. They had already signed off on the first two phases, which depending on how you want to look at the phases, it's between, you know, 30 billion and $40 billion. But then they've got all these expansion phases to get down to like the two nanometer pr meter process so that they can build the next generation chipsets all the way out to 2035. Wow. So they're trying to take all of the, the chip fabrication and the, the, the uh, stereolithography from China and Asia, bringing it here so that they can make, <coughs> excuse me, they want to be able to make the chipsets for say iPhones and mobile technology and computing technology all the way till it'll be like the iPhone 18 or the iPhone 19. We're at, thir we're at iPhone generation 13, mm -hmm. but they're planning all the way to almost iPhone 20. Wow. They're trying to get their ducks in a row because they want to make the, the chips here in the United States and Central Ohio, as opposed to Shenzhen and those places in Asia, because they're worried that uh, the Chinese government, the Chinese ch government could cut off the chip supply at any point. We had this chip struggle through coronavirus. It's a huge weakness in the whole entire tech. Yeah, they, they shut down basically the whole country over there. Yes. And okay. by doing that, we st we have supply chain yes. demands, guys. So, and yeah. So, so so you are in favor of the government spending that because that is protects I, kind of our. I am I am perfectly fine. I I love the idea of them getting a tax break, because what they're doing is they're not the government's not actually giving them money. They're giving a tax write off. The th thing they're that saying I, bring me jobs, bring me bring jobs. me jobs, bring me the chips here. Yes. And we'll and instead of you guys paying X Y Z in taxes, yes. you'll just pay a little you'll, less. You'll, you'll, you you're going to pay a little less or a lot less. They're going to bring a minimum of ten thousand jobs to the Central Ohio, but because those jobs are paying one hundred fifty two hundred fifty k, way over what it is, it's not uh, it's not ten thousand jobs to Central Ohio. It's really going to be one hundred and fifty thousand jobs. Is that what it is? A fifteen x on that? Yeah, it's it's huge. Wow. Because now it's so one hundred fifty thousand jobs. That means we need 75,000 new houses. Yes. We don't, and we, we already have a 50,000 house deficit in Central Ohio. So, so what's going to happen in real estate? It's the prices are going to go up. I, on my personal time, I am trying to figure out how do we build effective, affordable housing. So, where I'm trying to dip my toes into in my spare time, if I, if I have spare time, is the next generation of modular construction for single family detached. I, I have a guy that maybe I can introduce you to. So I'm, I've, I've got feelers out to a couple different guys. I've got one company I'm looking at. When you say modular construction, a lot of people think a double wide. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about a double wide. I'm talking about a house builder that builds piece together houses. They truck them in, they bring just a crane. Yes, they drop part in the factory and then assembled yes, in the land. And assembled, assembled on site. And even at the height of our inflation everything they're getting a landed cost of 125 to 150 50 dollars per square foot with the infrastructure with the foundation with the utilities on site so for me if i can build my goal is a, a, a thousand square foot home for 150k i want to figure out how to get that down to like a really i want to figure out how to do it for a hundred thousand dollars i got a guy who's building 1,700 square foot container homes okay. for 130 grand. 130 grand. Wow. Okay. That's le way less than the company that I'm already got talking to right now. He built, I'll, I'll introduce you to him. We can fly down and look at his project. Um, he built a bunch down in Mississippi. There's okay. a town down there and they needed a bunch of affordable housing. Yeah. yeah this isn't the same guy that I, I've, I've got a, I've, be, I've been approached from a guy that does container housing and I asked him what his landed cost was. And it was like 175 to 200 thousand dollars. Sorry, 175 to 200 dollars a square foot. Oh man, we can build stick cheaper than that. I know. Yeah. And that's he said you want to partner together on a deal. I'm like, no, because I yeah. I really care about affordable housing. Yeah, uh, you yeah. know, I talk to people and I get a lot. Well, of, because it resonates with you. Yes, I mean you you guys got a you got evicted. Yeah, I got evicted twice. So I remember. So you understand it wasn't just you. Yeah. Sometimes it wasn't like uh, we didn't want to pay or we were irresponsible, just didn't have the money. Well, we typically, yeah, it's it's a very complicated thing. But I look at these houses that I, I rent out to people and like, these are dumps. I'm like, I don't have holes in the wall. The kids here aren't going to have to sleep over a diesel furnace to get warm at night. Yeah, I, I did. Yep. Um, you don't have to rely on wood. You know, I know how to swing a mall. Mm -hmm. I just know what a mall is. You've split wood with it <laughs> yeah. uh, the hard way. 
Um, you know, when you when you heat your house with wood, you get heated twice. You get heat, tw- two heat. Yeah. You get one from burning the wood, and, and you get one, one from, from actually splitting the wood. Yeah, and loading so, it up. So, um, you know, there are lots of nights that we heated. We had to heat. My parents were in between getting fill-ups with diesel at two bucks a gallon. So, you know, I, I'm thankful for those opportunity, those that experience growing up. I'm thankful for the four hundred dollar a month rental that my parents had in the middle of the cornfield, back a 300, 400 yard lane. I'm thankful for that upbringing. I want to figure out how to bring a, 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 mo, a higher quality house for a similar price. With inflation, that house isn't a $400 house anymore. It's a $750 house. How do I bring a single, a freestanding single family detached with a one car garage for 750 bucks a month? I realize that that's an Ohio cost. You're going to pay yep. a lot more for land, whatever else. But I know I'm friends with a developer I don't want to out him. He's in California right now. He says government compliance and all the stupid BS I put up with yes. a- adds three hundred thousand dollars to the cost of every house I build. I got a buddy of mine that spent a hundred thousand dollars in San Francisco just to get his permits, and it took him a year and a half. Oh, this guy's even worse. Yeah, and you're San Francisco. No, 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 not oh. building. This oh. was an addition on his house. Okay, addition on the house. Okay, hundred grand in eighteen grand. months. He just sold the house. He couldn't yeah. do it. This guy's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars per house to build them. And I don't want to out where his location is because he is the builder in Calif- in this part of California. And if I threw out his location, everybody knew who it is. But he told me he tracks all of his costs because he knows where everything is. He is the most efficient builder in California right now. And I said, how much is your house right now? Three bed, two bath, two car garage. How much is it if we would take the government out of the equation? Um, he said, these houses are $250,000 houses. I'm not going to say where his location is, but you could be to downtown L.A. two hours from one of his, his, his developments. Downtown L.A. two hours with traffic. $250,000 is what it actually costs him to build them. I've asked him, how much would you like to make on these? $50,000 a pop. seventy five k a pop. I'll, I'll make my money yep. all day, every day at, at making 20%, at, at 20% return mm-hmm. on them. So here's the, 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 the situation for your people in California. Three bed, two bath house for with the land cost for three hundred thousand dollars, and he's making all the money in the world. Those houses are selling for six fifty today because of government compliance costs yep. and all the things. And he sells them like hotcakes. When I talked to him, he said he was currently in development on my last conversation on three hundred and fifty units. Wow, for freestanding single family houses. But he's like Brandon. These costs are so astronomical. So I like Ohio because. We already said this in a video we did earlier. Ohio is becoming very pro-business. Yes, they are. Our taxes are not that bad. You start an LLC, I don't know if you knew this, you start an LLC in the state of Ohio, the first $250,000 of your distributions in Ohio are tax-free. Yep. You do not pay tax on the first $250,000 you make in the state of Ohio if you form an LLC. And at the state of Ohio, it's 99 bucks. Yeah, so, and, 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 and yearly, you don't even have to pay a renewal. Nope. All these other, uh, uh, Nevada States. and yeah. Wyoming and Delaware, every year you have to pay. California's like 800 for an LLC. Yeah, I was thinking it was six, I, yeah, it's $600 last time I checked. But and it's, it's every year up. you got to pay it again. Yeah, just for the privilege. Oh, you of, still got your business? You know, I got 35 LLCs. Yeah. Imagine if I was out there. Yeah, I've got, I've got I just opened uh, my 11th last week. So I got 11 LLCs in the state of Ohio. It's cost me 99 bucks a clip. I don't have to pay any money. I do have to file taxes on them. So my accountant pay, I pay 250 a year, just an accountant, main, accountant maintenance fees for these LLCs. That's it. Now, what you can do is, and we have that too, you can put a bunch of them under an umbrella, umbrella of LLC. one, and okay, you don't yeah. have to pay the 250. Okay. So, and that's a federal thing that I do. It's not a state thing. It's not because I'm in Ohio. Yep. So Ohio is becoming very competitive business-wise. We gave a lot of benefits out to Intel. We're giving a lot of benefits out to Amazon. Um, I still have houses that I pay thousand dollars a month, uh, th- sorry, thousand dollars a year taxes on. We still have very many municipalities yes. that have their heads screwed on in the right direction. That's right. Ohio. Yep. And for me, what I want to do as a real estate guy is I want to show because I own the newspaper, because I have social media presence. I want to show what government looks like when it's run efficiently. Mm-hmm. We've got some. We're, we are in Ross County, Ohio, right now. We've got some really good commissioners. Yeah, some pretty decent city council people. I would love to highlight the fact that these guys are aggressive, they're pro business, and they are here to help people. Um, at my train station, I have uh, rentals for two hundred and fifty dollars a month. Uh, sorry, two, I've got one rental for two twenty-five a month. I pay your water and trash. 
It's a one bedroom, one bed bathroom, second story apartment. Mm -hmm. And I talk to people online. Man, I'd love to see that place, man. Yeah, I don't, cool. have, I don't have keys to it today. So yeah, we, I mean, we could do it in the future. I do want to do a video series on the train station um, in the near future rather than later. Um, so we've got these properties and I'm like 300 bucks a month. You know, if I did a full renovation, made this the nicest place in the world, eh, we're up to $500 a month rental and I'm still making plenty of money. Yep. Yeah, see, we could we could go all day. But this has all been day, absolutely man. wonderful, very productive. Brother. Uh, everybody that's watching this podcast, I hope that you've learned something. I think that if I would have listened to this, uh, you know, 15 years ago, I would have learned so much. Yes. Learning from someone like me, just saying, go out and take those chances. Go out and ask Don't be somebody. afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to fail. Go out and put a deal together. Go out and find somebody to invest some money. If you can show that somebody's going to make a bunch of money out of a deal, the world will, will buy your property. Don't hesitate. Learn the process. You can do it. That's I have right. no formal education. I've got it. I've got it done. I've got, you know, figured about $10 million worth of assets at this point. And I've done it for, you know, I started with $25,000 back in 2013. So, and, and, but if you had education now, oh you could do it how much quicker? Two years. Two years. Maybe three. all day. Yeah. And once you get to that point, you go from owning 10 million to 50 million almost overnight. Yeah. And, and so, um, and, and to reiterate, man, because I just got to tell you guys, I would rather go bankrupt again and lose everything and start over again as opposed to lead a, 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 a mediocre life where I just grind out every day, live paycheck to paycheck, and hope that when I'm 65 that I'm, man, I hope I don't, I hope I don't live to 85 because I'm going to run out of money when I'm 82. Yeah. I would rather. I, I'm yeah. not sure where you're at. But, guys, it's been an absolute pre pleasure, brother, having you on. Yeah. You're an inspiration to many guys. Go out there. Where can you? Where can they um, learn all, from you? All my social media is on Investment Joy. I'm on Instagram. I'm on YouTube. I'm on TikTok. Um, I'm on Facebook. Uh, the only thing I'm on Twitter, but I'm not on Twitter a ton. The only thing I don't do is Snapchat, and that's it. So now, what about if somebody wants to learn from you? If someone wants to learn from me directly, um, we got a, a tw uh, 52 week mentorship and coaching program called Ultimate Joy. You can get that at investmentjoy.com. Um, like right now, we're not going to do this forever, but you join the program, you get a free, well, it's not free, you pay for it, but you get a 30 minute initiation consultation with me. Wow. So we go over your, the, where you are in life, all the problems and struggles you're facing with, and I give you suggestions, ideas. We've got over 200 video lessons, 20 to 30 hours worth of video content, and that video content is growing every single week because I do a private live stream with all my members, and we go over with what have I learned this week, what are you struggling with this week? How can we co work together? How can I help you? And we've been doing it for six weeks. We've got um, people that are already in contract on their car washes. We That's got a guy amazing, that already brother. bought his first car wash. Um, one guy bought my program. He got angry at me. He said, there's not enough good information in here. And I said, you didn't watch any of the content because I've seen how many videos you've watched. You watched one of my videos. He said, yeah, you're right. You got me. I said, here, I'm going to show you. We're going to start your vending business today. And I said, if you, will you hop in your truck now? If you, I, if you do what I tell you to do today, will you do it? And he said, yeah, I'll do whatever you say. Cause I already bought your content. And I, I, I said, we found him three vending machines. I said, hop in your truck. It's an hour and a half away. Here's $4,000 in vending machines. If you use my program, he hopped in his truck, drove, got him, brought him back. He said, Brandon, that 30 minute phone call changed my life. He said, I just can't. That's what I'm talking about, he said, brother. He said, I don't understand how you did that. And I said, I listened to, I took my own advice. We got on, we started finding you some vending machines, underpriced, some values that I can just, I can pull, I can pull deals out of my butt. And you teach people um, where to Vin find those vending, at? Vending machines, my process for vending machines, not much different than finding a car wash or a laundromat or a house. It's all the same thing. You find a, something undervalued. And, 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 and I think that's it. the key though, because people ask me all the time, Nate, I can't find deals. It's because oh. you don't know how to underwrite the yes. deals. Yeah, you, so you, you teach them how to underwrite yeah, we show and it becomes them, easy. I've got a process how to identify underperforming laundromats, car washes, how to um, find cheap vending machines, how to place them. Uh, how do you find an uh, undervalued apartment complex? How do you do it? It's all the exact same thing. It just depends on your scale. Some people, the biggest problem is I see people, they feel like they are only good enough for a vending machine. You know what, mm. buddy? You're fine. You're, if you feel only good enough for a vending machine, let's start there. Let's you start feel, there, yeah. um, I've got a video series on flipping, going to yard sales and buying stuff. You feel only good enough for uh, a yard, buying, spending $5 at a yard sale, buying uh, salt and pepper shakers? Fine. Let's, let's Brandon, just do this. Do you know that 88% of millionaires had to make their first $100? That so, doesn't surprise me. 
I mean, I mean, they, they all started off broke. Yeah, everybody starts so off broke. They start off broke. So if you are broke, you are in a great position. How do they get a hold of you? Where, where do they sign um, up? Um, investmentjoy.com. Everything's on there. You've got a free, you uh, you go through the form, you get a free 30 minute call with um, one of my um, team members. They understand what I'm doing. They understand how I'm valuating deals and they can kind of walk you through with what we're going to teach you. Um, it's a 30 minute call. They they kind of vet you to figure out whether you're going to, it's two things. Can you afford the coaching? Can you afford the training? Will you actually do it? Yes. If you, uh, if you fail on either of those things, you get kicked out of the program and you get sent to a page to buy my vending course. So yeah, and it's a good yeah. vending course. It's a set piece content, but then um, you're not going to get direct coaching from me, but we break, you know, the, the cost isn't too great. I think, it's something that everybody can put on a credit card if you so desire to get that training. It's to get never too for me. great, you know, and for me, and I'm not trying to talk bad, but what's too great is to go spend four years going to college, yeah. coming out 100000 in debt to learn how to make 50 or 60 grand yes. a year. He's going to teach you guys how to make a six-figure income, scaling up doing vending and not have that debt. Yeah. And, and, and not just vending, that's the start. Yeah. You have very little money. You start there. Yeah. You just have to be dedicated, guys. So listen, man, I hate when people feel like they're not in charge of their life. If you are in the United States of America, you are 100% in charge of your life. And if you're not doing it for you, find your why. Might be your kids, might be your grandkids, might be your mom, dad, whatever it may be. Yep. You have to find your why. Yes. Brandon, thank you so much, thank you. brother. Great. Yep. I awesome. look forward to buying some hotels yeah, with you, brother. Yeah, let's buy some hotels together. Your, your seven-year-old son's going to be super happy, man. Oh, yeah. He would, he what, does he have a hotel there. that he wants to buy, uh, uh, one in mind? No, he just wants any hotel. Okay, not any. We're going to get him a, a Hilton, IHG, no. or a Marriott. Or, yeah. You know, Choice is good. Yeah. Radisson just got bought by Choice. We were looking to build yeah. one of them. but He doesn't care. He wants to be the guy that shows them to their room. That's all he said he wants to do in life. Show people. Hey, man, room. if that's what he wants to do, that's what he wants yeah. to do, man. We'll get him the, the baddest, the, the little cart, you know, he wants yeah. to be the, the yeah. uh, we'll get him one with a motor. <laughs> It'd be hilarious. <laughs> well, yeah. thank you for coming on, brother. Uh, it's been awesome. Look forward to doing uh, deals with you guys. Yep. Guys, if you want to lever up, make sure you follow Brandon. If you're not following him already, Investment Joy, he's got some of the most. Now, don't do this if we only got two or three minutes to watch videos because his, his videos are very addicting, man. But they're also so informational and so easy and simple for anybody to understand. Thanks again, Brandon. Thank you. Let's go lever up these deals, baby. Awesome. Sounds good. Yep. Awesome. Thanks for listening to Lever Up Your Life. If you could do me a huge favor and go lever up my reviews, leave me a five-star review. I appreciate it. And if you guys want to keep the conversation going, reach out to me on Nate.Barger on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, and get in our free Facebook group. we got over 200,000 members. B-R-R-R-R, -R -R -R, invest. We'll see you in the next episode.